Right, welcome to the Invivo Repair Center. Um, we're going to show you in this video, um, presumably you've come to watch this because you want to know how to remove and replace the sound processor in your Sound Dock 2. Um, if you need the Sound Dock Original Series 1, it's a different video. Don't watch this one because you'll get confused. Um, probably. And so this is Sound Dock 2. So you can, Sound Dock 2 is is easily recognizable because it has this curved over. The, instead of the grill being inset into a plastic frame, at the edges it's curved over and meets the frame halfway down the actual edge of the, of the, uh, of the, of the product. So here you go. So um, basically the sound processor, um, the power goes in here, uh, the audio in goes in there, and then the sound processor is nestling underneath this cover. And I'll show it to you in a minute. So. Basically, there is a diagnostic video, and if you've watched the diagnostic video and it says you've got to take the sound processor out and it requires a service because um, if it's not the docking connector, it pretty nearly always, pretty exclusively the sound processor. So you've done your diagnostics and you've come here and you've decided that you want to take the sound processor out, or you might want to put the sound processor back. So you would have followed this to remove the sound processor. If you carry on through the video, I'll be taking the sound processor out then I'll be putting the sound processor back in again. So it follows the whole thing. So if you've seen the first half, then scoot, scoot to approximately halfway and you'll see me putting it back. So to remove the sound processor, okay, the first thing is that um, it's to, you don't need to do this, uh, strictly speaking, to remove the sound processor, but it's good practice. So I'm gonna follow the good practice. This grill is held in by um, friction. There's a tangs on the end of the, uh, the actual grill with some rubber um, sponge material self adhesive on the side which is jammed into that slot so it's a technically uh, technically it's called a, a friction fit really it's just being jammed in um, because the designer couldn't think of what else to do so what you do is take a small coin I've got an English one of her Majesty's pennies here um, but any small coin that's not more than about 1.2 1.3 1.4 uh, thick millimeters or um, a sixteenth of an inch, a five a dime should do it. I would have thought you just put it in the slot here between the plastic and the grill, engage it fully, and then just gen gently just twist it. Don't go all the all the way, as it were. You're twisting it just to ease the uh, the, the grill out. And you can do it one end at a time. When you get to a certain position, you can then use your fingers. I've got my fingers underneath one ridge and my thumb pressing on there, and you can just work it out gently rocking away and there she goes. So this end is now detached. If you pull that that way now it will bend the grill so you've got to go around to the other side to disengage the other side. Again in the slot, in you go, give it a good twist, there we go, bit of fingers, job done. So that's the grill, grill removed, put to one side, don't let it sit on it. So here we are, um, you've got the speakers obviously, the infrared remote control, you've got the amplifier, this is the ribbon cable that um, provides the electrical connection between the sound processor in the base and the amplifier in the top half of the dock. Okay, so what we're going to do now is turn it over and uh, remove these four screws from the base moulding. Be careful when you put your dock on its lid. Uh, this is a very smooth table, but if you've got any sort of bits of rough material or grit or gravel or I think metal or a screw, it will scratch the top of your dock if you start scooting it around. So if you're a bit worried about that, always best put a cloth or a piece of plastic or something that's going to protect the top of your dock, especially if it's a very clean new dock. You don't want to go, you know, introduce fine scratches on the lid uh, on the top surface. So remove these four screws, and once the four screws have been removed, you can remove this cover and the sound processor is revealed. Okay. Now um, there's four little grommets here. These, this, a lot of people say, oh, this isn't, uh, my, the base of my dock is loose. You can see, even with the screws in, it's, it's loose. Well, that's a, a cush mounting, and the idea of that is to absorb some of the vibration from the dock when it's on high volume. It stops the uh, dock connector vibrating, because it will wear the connector. So it's, a, it's by design. So if it's you know, rocking slightly, it's not faulty. Okay? So there's your sound processor, and uh, you can see from the top half, this is the ribbon going down. I don't know if you can see that, Ray. If you can zoom in, you can see where it's plugged in. You might need to get closer and uh, use the zoom. 
You might not be able to hold it still from that distance. Mm -hmm. Come on, get closer. There you go. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Right, so this is plugged in. Again, this is one of these locking collar connectors. So that's where it plugs into the sound processor. So to, relieve, to remove that connector, we have to remove these four screws from the front of the dock, which hold the amplifier in. So just whip those out. Obviously don't care not to poke a hole in your loudspeaker. They're only cardboard after all. When you put this amplifier back in, you need to make sure the screws are tight because if, if there's any air gaps around, then the air whistles through and the bass response doesn't work properly. So gently, um, you might need to use your coin again just to uh, use each end just to break the seal to get the amplifier loose. Now don't take it out because there is a small ribbon coming from your remote control and you can see it here. Can you see that, Ray? Um, which is for your remote control and it plugs in and if you start pulling the amplifier out it will break the cable and you'll end up with more trouble than you started with. So um, gently remove the amplifier out slightly, holding it in position and this ribbon here is can be perhaps lay it on its back, you might be able to see better, you can see the ribbon, put your finger inside and just gently remove some of this ribbon and then drop the amplifier back down into position there and just just uh, put a screw in position just to hold it and then it'll stop it falling out and uh, putting a stress on the remote control ribbon at the top part. So there we are and then if you gently pull this down again I'll say be careful you don't lose your rubber cushion. These things just come off. I'll take them off now so you can see. There we are. The four little rubber things which obviously need to go back onto these four little posts when you've decided to reassemble and then you can lift this through here and you can see the two ribbons that hold the sound processor this one here and the one for the sound dock um, the docking the 24-way one is just a simple pull fit uh, pull pull uh, pull out it's not a, a zero it's not a locking connector so you can pull that one out but this one you need to show this in some detail you just need to raise that collar once again and that's the locking color you need to raise and you can see once that it's raised the cable come loose and then that's your sound processor so the sound processor is removed okay and then you can there's your dock to be stored away until such time as you want to refit the sound processor just incidentally um, I did have a Torx driver um, if we if you're sending your sound processor or your um, or your docking board in for diagnostics on the website there is a free diagnostic check if you get to the stage where you can't decide whether it's your docking board or the sound process which is causing the problem you can send the docking board plus the ribbon and the, and the sound processor into us for a diagnostic check and then we'll tell you which one is failed and then either offer to replace the docking board for you or to do a sound processor service and repair so removing those three screws um, Removing these three screws, you can then drop the board out, and this one's got a the uh, Inexus board inside, but yours will probably have the uh, standard Bose uh, docking board. So the three components that you need to send us for service and repair are these three components: okay, the ribbon, the docking board, and the sound processor. Um, if you send us plastic mouldings, um, we don't need them, we don't really want to look after them and also add a significant amount of weight if you're sending it in by airmail. So to send those three components in from, for example, from North America or USA is around about $7 in a jiffy bag by airmail. It takes four to seven working days to get here. If you add this, it's quite heavy, it's a larger envelope, it will cost more and also it will cost more for us to send it back and we try and keep our postage costs, our shipping costs as low as possible. Okay, so
try not to send any plastic parts into us. And if you send us these three components, we'll do the diagnostics and we'll come back to you and tell you what's wrong. And the prices we charge for the repairs and services are as listed on the website. There's no nasty surprises. Okay, we hope to give pleasant surprises. So come to that stage now where we're trying to put this back in. So it's pretty much the reverse of the removal. Place the dock on the table, upside down. Take your plastic moulding, your dock moulding. Fit the four rubber cush mounts, like so, onto the four pegs, like so. Okay. Now you have to feed this through the front there, like that. So this long ribbon comes in through this big aperture in the uh, in the dock, uh, the cradle moulding. Drop the cradle moulding into position so that the four cush drives go into the four accommodating slots in the base moulding. Now um, it's easier to connect this before you um, to the docking board before you reassemble. So at that point, you need to make sure that the shiny parts on this ribbon are facing towards the top. You can see there's the ribbon connector. This goes towards the top of the dock, so it sits in the dock that way up. Okay. So, um, but the shiny side, you need to look at the orientation. You've got the, the connector for the amplifier, connector for the front docking board, 24-way ribbon. And you can see you've got this foam protection, and the foam protection sits on there like that, pressed with this moulding here pressed up against that ribbon when it's assembled. If you put this ribbon upside down, it won't work because the contacts won't make contact with the electronics. So easy to plug this in now, and of course, if it's a standard Bose board you're putting back, you just simply have to align it carefully and plug it in by just pressing like that. If it's one of our boards that has the locking connector, which we've covered on the other video, you need to gently withdraw the locking collar to um, relieve the, the locking mechanism, slide the ribbon in and then push the collars in to lock it. Okay, That's explained on the other installation video as well. So if you're installing the front board for the first time then have a look at the installation video which covers just the installation of the board in a bit more detail if you're unsure what you're doing. So at the moment I'm just going to put the Bose board back in at the moment. So. Uh, Drop the ribbon cables in to make sure they're both plugged in. Equal uh, row of uh, metal contacts showing, equidistant along the front edge of the both connectors to show it's plugged in properly. Turn the unit vertical like this. Take the ribbon cable and have you got a close up view of that? Push it fully in and then push the locking collar in that direction to lock down onto the board. You can see that cable is now locked in, it's parallel, it's fully engaged in the connector. And then gently um, feeding this through, you feed this through and lower the sound processor into position, okay? There, so now it's sitting in position. We can drop our board back in, we can Drop our moulding back on. I'm just going to put uh, one screw in to, to hold it all in position to start with. Screw on here to hold the base moulding to position. Once I've successfully completed the next step, I'll come back and put all these screws in. Okay. So turn her over, and at the moment we've got the amplifier. This is the ribbon plugged into the sound dock uh, sound processor underneath, and we've got the amplifier held in one screw from when we disassembled it. So uh, we hold the amplifier in with your thumb, remove the screw. So lay the unit on its back. Lift the amplifier up this way. This, again, do not disengage this area here. If you pull this away from the dock by more than an inch or 25 millimeters, it'll um, basically, I was gonna say yank on the cable, but that's probably not the right thing to say. It'll pull on the cable um, and uh, possibly damage it. So feed your ribbon back inside. So you're just gently feeding the ribbon back into the hole. And you see there's some steps in the ribbon where it's been formed by the previous pressure where it's been clamped between the amplifier and the case. And of course, that needs just to go back in position. You'll see it fits down nicely into position, sits there. And when it's in position, you just lower the amplifier, 
pop in your four screws. As a note on putting these screws in, if, if you gently uh, turn them so they, they're self-cutting threads, um, so they, they cut threads in the plastic when they're first installed at the factory. Now, if you um, gently just turn them by hand, you can usually find the thread that was previously cut, and that makes the job of screwing them in much easier. Okay, so if you put them straight in and start pressing straight away, it'll have to cut a new thread, and you might find it's quite more, um, quite a lot more force required to put them in. So if you gently engage them into the, you'll feel it gently, not without pressing, and turn it, you can feel it engage into the screw thread, and that might save you a little bit of um, problems. And obviously make sure that your screwdriver fits the head of the screw correctly. Oh, that one's already in. Spot the deliberate mistake. Okay. Of course we're going to have to put these screws back in. Thread. There we go. And then finally the two screws in the uh, half moon moulding need to put them back in. Let's check that one's tight, which it is. And then finally putting the, uh, the grill back on. Um, it doesn't matter whether it goes on that way it actually does, there's the tang at the top, what I'm talking about, there's the tang at the top. So you need to put it on with the three tangs, the central one at the top. Um, if you put it upside down, it'll interfere with the sound processor. So you're putting it back on, obviously just offering it into position. As I say, three tangs at the top. And then just ease her back in until she's fully done. And when it's fully engaged. So that shows you how to remove and refit the sound processor.